I live and breathe Android, and I'm constantly exploring different flavors and experiences OEMs bring to the table. It's easy to get locked into one ecosystem, but the beauty of Android is 100% its diversity. Lately, I've been spending some true quality time with Nothing OS, and I wanted to share some of the top features that have genuinely impressed me. This is actually the first time that I've used a Nothing phone, specifically the 3A as my daily driver, and coming from a Pixel device, which has been my primary phone for probably 90% of the past few years, I was naturally curious. What makes Nothing OS so special? What are these standout features that differentiate it, especially for someone that's so accustomed to Google's vision of Android? And in this video, I'll show you some standout features. So without wasting any more time, let's get right into it and show you what you need to know about Nothing OS. And I gotta say, this first one is definitely one of the easiest and also one of my favorites, but it's important because the Glyph interface is such an essential part of Nothing Phones that's heavily integrated into the core experience. I only wanna talk about the most practical features and the Glyph interface offers some that I, as a daily user, have really come to appreciate. Flip to Glyph is fantastic as you put your phone face down and it automatically silences notifications, but the Glyph lighting will still activate to provide a subtle visual pulse when you get a call or a new notification. It's a great way to stay aware without any audible interruptions. The Glyph can also act as a charging progress light, at least on the main flagship Nothing phones, which is just undeniably cool to see when sitting on a desk, you get a quick visual check without having to actually pick up the phone or wake up the screen. Then there's a Glyph timer. This kind of acts as a visual Pomodoro timer, giving you a light-based countdown for focusing on tasks. And while it might not be super practical for all day, everyday use, it is really cool to have the music visualizer feature on where the glyph lights react to the sound being played from your phone. I will say though, it can be a bit distracting, so I definitely don't keep it on all the time. Thankfully, there's a quick settings toggle where you can enable or disable it on the fly, which I use all the time and I find it super helpful. For instance, if I'm driving in the car at night, I will 100% have this feature on, but during the day in a brighter environment, I'll switch it on for a more fun, dynamic feeling effect. And that is really just scratching the surface of what the glyph interface can do, but those are some of my favorite use cases. It's a testament to how Nothing is thinking differently about hardware and software integration, and I gotta say, it's one of my favorite parts of this OEM. This next one is a feature I genuinely didn't realize that I would love in any way until I had it, which is fully customizable, adjustable quick settings. Now, we just heard Pixel UI is going to implement something similar to this to some degree with Android 16, which is excellent news for Pixel fans. And if you wanna see a sneak peek of how that works, Nothing's implementation is pretty great and is pretty close to what we're gonna actually see when Material 3 Expressive comes to Pixel devices. For what we have here, it's grid-based customization with no rigid presets, so you have the freedom to play place any quick settings panel and any free spot on the grid. And unlike what I believe we're gonna get with Pixel UI, you can resize the tiles in Nothing OS to show more or less information. For example, the alarm tile can be expanded to show your upcoming alarm, which is pretty cool. The data panel will show your data usage for your current billing cycle. And the Bluetooth tile can be expanded for a larger four slot panel that you can swipe through to see what's connected or quickly toggle connections on and off. Nothing crazy, <laughs> no pun intended, but this is a solid foundation for a more useful quick settings panel, and I can't wait to see how Nothing builds on this in the future. As a longtime Pixel user, this next Nothing OS feature is super simple, but it just shows to emphasize how far Pixel UI is in this regard because you need developer options to turn this feature on, but pop-up windows is an awesome feature in Nothing OS. It's super solid for multitasking, and it makes things a lot easier if you're someone that frequently likes to access or reference multiple apps at once. Its execution in Nothing OS is pretty clean. You just swipe up on an app from the recent menu as you normally would, but then you can continue to drag and drop towards the top of the display to enter this pop-up window UI. What you get here is a compact, resizable window that you can use for quick reference or interaction, whatever the situation calls for. Minimalizing it will tuck it up into a little quick access bubble that you can drag around your screen, also keeping it readily available. As I mentioned, it's really useful for quickly accessing a specific app or having information overlaid on top of another. I will say, a lot of skins also have this feature and they're probably more flexible out on other operating systems, but having this as a native, easily accessible feature in Nothing OS is a welcome addition, at least to me. 
This next one is something I really wish Pixel devices had more prominently, and apparently it is coming in a future Android update, but in the meantime, I have to give nothing props for their implementation of lock screen widgets. This is really useful because you can see and interact with a selection of widgets right on your lock screen without needing to fully unlock your device. This translates to quicker access to information that is important to you and specific controls. But the biggest thing you need to know is that they also show data on the always on display, which is a nice touch as well, offering at a glance info at any moment. In terms of functionality, you can currently only add from a preset selection of widgets that nothing is curated, but they do cover the basics pretty well. For me, I have the essential space widget, which we'll talk more about in a minute, and the weather widget consistently on my lock screen, but you can also add a widget for quick settings, which is incredibly convenient as anything that doesn't require you to actually unlock your phone for security reasons like toggling on the hotspot, flashlight, or do not disturb will activate instantly when tapped, which really streamlines those frequent simple interactions. This next one is definitely a somewhat underrated feature that I think more people should be taking advantage of if they're not already, but in Nothing OS, you have the ability to remap the power button's double tap gesture. Now, listen, I know a lot of Android OEMs let you do this, but Nothing's implementation is pretty good because they give you some unique first party options alongside your typical selection. You can set it to interact with the Glyph feature like the Glyph timers or Glyph torch flashlight, for example, which is a nice tie-in. You can also trigger system settings like open in Google Wallet, toggling Do Not Disturb, or muting the phone. Even better though, you can also set it to open any app you have installed, which is a fantastic touch for quick access to your most used applications. But to step it up a bit in a major way, and the real reason I'm even talking about this feature in general, is because you can set the double tap gesture to open a specific app shortcut as well. This could genuinely be a game changer for some people's workflows, allowing you to jump directly into a specific function within an app, like composing a new tweet, starting a specific playlist, or creating a note, all with just two double presses of the power button. Screenshots are another aspect of Nothing OS that I do appreciate because they've put their own spin on it in a few important ways. For one, you can set a gesture for three finger swipe down to take a screenshot, which is just a super intuitive, fun way to interact once you get used to it. But if you press and hold with three fingers, it activates a selective screenshot mode, allowing you to crop around a specific area that you wanna capture. This is super slick, and it's definitely worth knowing how to use consistently as it often eliminates the need to crop your screenshot afterwards. But something even cooler is that you have some expanded options for regular screenshots. One is integration with ChatGPT, accessible via this little eye icon. Tapping on it will automatically upload your screenshot to ChatGPT, where you can then ask questions about its content or get summaries. It's a cool integration, but with Google's own Gemini offering almost the exact same capability directly within Android, this is more so a matter of which AI assistant you prefer. And a somewhat hidden but very useful feature here, there is a dedicated blur markup tool in the screenshot editor. So instead of awkwardly trying to use the blackout tool to obscure sensitive information, which by the way, I've seen many people not do this successfully, you have a dedicated blur function that works pretty well and provides a much cleaner professional look. Finally, Pixel devices already have some features that do touch on this to some degree, like the AI-powered organization within Pixel screenshots, but Essential Space on Nothing devices serves a similar purpose of intelligent content aggregation, while also having a lot of potential for growth in the future. Effectively, Essential Space is Nothing's take on an AI-driven hub, giving users an environment where they can store and organize images, audio, and text. And then the AI analyzes and organizes this data for you to access and act on later. It's able to summarize the content of screenshots, summarize information from articles that you save to it, and provide details like opening times and locations from a saved Google Maps listing. It can also transcribe and summarize information from the voice notes that you record into it. And within the camera app, you have the option to send images directly to essential space as you capture them. Furthermore, if there's an actionable reminder detected within the content that you save, like a date or a specific task, you'll receive a notification about it at a later, more relevant time. Overall, it is a strong start, at least to me. It's interesting to have an extra dedicated button for this on the Phone 3A, although I personally wish it did a lot more in its current iteration. Don't get me wrong, I do like the concept of Essential Space more than the actual feature itself in its current state because I feel like it can't really do too much right now. I know nothing is a new company when it comes to this. I know they're still working on it, but it does need to cook a little bit more. And also, I do have to mention this. It seems like a real missed opportunity that users 
users can't remap this dedicated key. I feel like this would just give people more utility and allow them to customize their device as they see fit, which to me is always a positive. I don't really like forcing users into a specific feature, especially if they personally don't find it useful for their workflow, and it makes the device feel a little bit more restrictive than I'd like it to be. But regardless, I'm genuinely intrigued to see how nothing expands on Essential Space in the future, and hopefully down the road, they make that dedicated key actually worth it not being able to be remapped. So my friends, there you have it. A look at some of my favorite and most interesting features within Nothing OS, particularly through the lens of a longtime Pixel user. And that's something that I feel like you should keep in mind. As a Pixel user, it's been a genuinely refreshing experience daily driving the Nothing Phone 3A. There's a clear and distinct design philosophy here, not just in the hardware, but deeply embedded in the software interactions. And there are some genuinely thoughtful additions that enhance the core Android experience in a few unique ways. Yes, of course, no user interfaces without its quirks and areas for potential improvement, but for a company that's still relatively new to the operating system game, nothing is undeniably bringing some fresh ideas to the Android landscape, and I'm excited to see how Nothing OS continues to mature from here on out. But those are just my thoughts, and I'm going to close it out here. With all that said, are there any Nothing OS features that you particularly love that I haven't mentioned on this list? And if you're a Pixel owner who's had a chance to try Nothing OS, what was your experience like? Do you see yourself keeping an eye on their developments in the future? Do they surprise you with anything that we need to know about? Drop your thoughts and opinions and experiences all in the comments down below, because as always, I love hearing from the Android community on what they think of anything Google or Android. With that said, I'm getting out of here. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.